guys, and welcome to the Elle Beauty Weekender presented by Tata Clique. I'm Sonakshi Sharma, Elle's beauty writer, and today we are in conversation with the infamous Bollywood actress Aditi Rao Hydri. She's also a singer and a dancer, and she's been in the industry for more than a decade. And Elton Fernandez, who is a makeup maestro well known in the celebrity industry. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi, Hi Sonakshi. How are you? I'm well. How's your day going? Just <laughs> <laughs> I had a long day, <laughs> and I've done okay. many things today. I mean, we've been prepping for this session, so we're all very excited to have you on board. We'll just dive right in. Um, my first question to you is: Could you tell us about your friendship? Because we've heard that you guys are very close friends, and this you guys work professionally together. I'm going to demonstrate how it goes. Come this, on, L2. This, no, you're, what you're missing is the main point is that both of us are just acting. <laughs> so. I wish I wish we were better actors uh, off camera. Yeah. We're on camera, yeah. okay? But you know what? Uh, I, I'm a terrible actor off camera. So, uh, but how usually we met. when I no, not how we met. So uh, when uh, so when I see LT, I only want to like squish him and hug him and cuddle him. And she sends me these silly stickers and emojis with the with bears doing the same thing. Yeah. Bears. So there's a uh, there's a white looking bear, there's and a, a brown, brown bear, bear, and that's like us. And I keep sending him. And how I'm so cuddling. disgusted by it. Yeah. He's basically <laughs> too much, and I'm like LT. That's how. <laughs> that's what. I'm that's so sweet. So how long have you guys known each other? So I moved to Bombay in 2011, right? 2011, and I met you in 2012. It's that movie Ali Zafar I did a program. Yeah. That time. So uh, when London, Paris, New York, New York, London, Paris, New York time, which would be 2012, is when I first met L2. Nine years. Yeah. Nine years. Uh, yeah. But for the first five years, we weren't friends. Yeah. Oh, so then what changed? What changed? I just yeah. Started... So how did you guys bond? No, it was me. I would say. She was friendly and all of that, but I just, I am really not trusty, trusty, uh, you know, of people in general. So, and of course, I mean, actors do, it's a known fact, right, that they, everybody has a motive. And yeah. so as long as you're serving that motive, then you're friends. So it takes me like five years on an average to feel like I have, I can put my guard down. So that's what it was. So that's L2, not her. L2, L2 has said this before, but he, you want to say what you what you thought when you first met me? I laughed my gut what out. What did I say? <laughs> L2 said, he's like, is she even real? She gives me diabetes. How can someone... Yeah, why is she? I said, she's so saccharine. <laughs> okay. So that's Sweet. when she, when he first met me, that's what he felt. And L2 is all very edgy and very like, oh, so, and then here he met somebody. Someone like, soft <laughs> and sweet and never showing any other tempo other than this and speech. He was just like, Argh. and then so five years later, hence, once he realized that that's the real deal and it is <laughs> not <laughs> pretending to be that, now <laughs> it is very it fond of me. Makes me seem very bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, no, but it's also me, honestly. Uh, like, I tend to be shy and Especially when I first came, I, you know, I, everybody used to tell me, oh, I look great in person and then it doesn't translate. So I was just like, God only knows what it is. You know, I have no idea. And then um, I worked with LT around that time. And then many years later, something happened and I was like, I think I want to work with Elton again. And uh, uh -huh. I remember we were doing um, a cover and um, I even remember who was shooting it. Eric Coase was shooting it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that when we met after a long time? It was anyway, and then um, and LT came on and LT came on for that, and I found that he just got me and uh, my vibe, and I felt that he brought up what is special in me because everybody has something special. He brought up what is special in me without trying to change me in any way. And mm -hmm. over time, I think he's just given me so much more confidence. And you know, though I might be, I might have an inherent sense of confidence, but it does waver, you know, because you hear so many different opinions and mm -hmm. it is confusing for a new actor. And then I felt like uh, Elton and even my sister, I mean, a lot of other people I've worked with as well, but I feel primarily uh, Elton, he gave me so much confidence in just being me and being mm -hmm. petite and having, a, you know, sort of that not loading up the makeup and mm -hmm. making, you know, like 
being okay with being fresh skinned etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think that's really really helped me as a person and as an artist so i really i think that's lovely but i really like him and um today the uh, elton is sitting here but there's also somebody called anuja uh, who i met before elton now there's there's two three people like this sana my stylist but i feel like lt really he gets me and like a lot of people um, even uh, other makeup artists know us they call us like the pixie twins because they like you're basically like really similar looking <laughs> which which is very odd <laughs> different fathers <laughs> Yeah, but we are from Pixie Land. We always say that we're little pixies. Pixie Land. Yeah, something. See, but that's the fun of life, I guess, right? If you find that one person that you bond with so well, then I don't think there's much more needed after that. Yeah. So, so me, you I can mean, always, you can't have enough of a good, of a good thing. Okay, that's lovely. That's, that's lovely. Evolving, you know, there are times when we really fight. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I like in, in, in with the rest of my team. they really they really indulge me and i can be a brat with lt and me i indulge him and he can be a brat and i am quite like <laughs> it's true oh my god yeah. yeah i mean okay i i'm so humbled by your relationship i mean to find a friend like that i feel that's just so blessed so but i want to pick up on one thing aditi that you said you said that um he allows me to be okay with a little less makeup you know like being fresh faced and stuff like that which brings me to my next point which is you know the past year has been so many things for us in terms of whatever has happened um but our relationship with beauty in a sense has evolved i think tremendously because from a industry or from a world that was so much focused with you know makeup and all kinds of um you know products coming in new launches which are still very much happening but the tone has kind of shifted right we've now moved to skincare because the more we're staying indoors the more we're in lockdowns we're constantly talking about how skin care has become like the bigger thing and people want to take care of their natural skin first and then there are dewy trends coming in fashion week is showing all kinds of fresh faces so i feel like that is what brings me to my next question what does beauty mean to you guys personally at the moment you go first so it's in line with what you said which would be somebody who's uh takes the time of to look inward Mm-hmm. you know and really it's about self care uh, and yeah. knowing that if if you are strong at your core and you are your own anchor only then yeah. can you be an anchor to someone else otherwise it's like a doom for all parties so right. for me it has been a time to sort of introspect uh, and know to, to take care of yourself now in this time rather than focusing on oh how can i help how can i help others I, you know it's it, at some point it was tough to belly like sort of i won't say stay afloat but you know we had this sort of thriving environment earlier yeah which became so like basic so it was something to adapt to. right alti what do you think what would you say that beauty meant to you right now beauty could be anything how would you define it i think to me it's really meant the same thing for uh, for over the years which possibly mm-hmm. means i don't know maybe like uh I don't know. Like I want to say that it's evolved for me, but it really uh, actually hasn't. And I'm being very honest when I say that because um, I feel like when I started, which would be about 2011, um, mm-hmm. at that point I felt a lot of pressure to conform to certain, um, certain, uh, a certain understanding of beauty, especially in the film industry, which was a lot more uh, veering towards uh, glamour. Glamour in a very, um, in a very uh, I don't want to use the word generic, generic, but you know what I mean, like a, a visually um, generic. Yeah, visually generic kind of glamour, which basically means like your eyes are, you know, lashes, lashes, fake false oh. lashes, and eyeshadow and uh, lipstick, and like the the the, the whole deal. Uh, he like the conventional full face. Conventional full face, yeah, and then a conventional way of dressing, like in terms of what <laughs> is sexy and what is glamorous, and right. never look i like i never actually visualized myself like that i always you know uh, thought of myself as not wanting to use much makeup just being fresh faced not wearing heels wearing flats um mm-hmm. uh, being more like even today i'm wearing a t-shirt uh mm-hmm. i'm not so dressed up and uh, so like for me that is what was beauty and i mm-hmm. was a little stubborn about it i don't think a lot of people around me got what i was trying to do because there was pressure to conform Right. And then like which is why I, I value 
uh, Elton, uh, which is why I value someone like Elton so much because he disinformed me into myself and a, mm-hmm. and a polished version of myself, a groomed version of myself. Uh, for mm-hmm. character, uh, and um, I, I just, I, I feel that, that that's the evolution that I have through to say that here is fresh, fresh faced. But you can yeah. have fresh face for camera that is a evolved and groomed version of that. And I continue to do that even today. Uh, but there are and say somebody like Elton and only he gets to do that. Uh, will push me into doing something really whacked out. And uh, I let him do it because I feel like it's also his creativity. I might not like it particularly and I'll tell him. But I'm like, okay, but you do it. You know, because yeah, play with, like I am, like ultimately I am the, a doll and you can dress me up the way that you want to for that day and be creative in the way that you want to. So I feel, mm-hmm. you know, I can't really say much about my beauty evolution. It's It's pretty much the same. But I do feel like, you know, having confidence in yourself and what it is, who it is that you want to be and who it is that you are. Yeah. And be all authentic. Of that, yeah, and be authentic. Yeah. But, and that's what I was going to say, that who you who you are and who you want to be have to kind of come together. together. You know, so you are authentic. And so people really love you for who you are. And I think that's when you really feel you're most beautiful. And for me, I think beauty is about feeling beautiful. And then look beautiful. And I think you can only feel beautiful when you truly um, sleep well at night. And learn to love yourself and respect who you see in the mirror, which is that introspection again. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I think that's such a such a lovely way to put it that you know, like Aditi said, that you the both of them have to come together, what you want to be and what you are. You know, when you yeah. find that yeah. that that amalgamation, it is yeah. going to be enlightening in a way. And like Elton just said, that when you look in the mirror, you have to like who you are. I think yeah. those are wise words to live by. Thank you guys. I think yeah. those are such yeah. wonderful yeah. answers for our readers and our audience watching. <laughs> no, I was just saying, so actually the only sad thing is. Yeah, uh, it sounds very easy, but it's really difficult. Yeah, you it's know? not easy to 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 find that synergy. It's not easy to find that comfort. It's not and be really, okay with the sacrifices, if any, yeah. that come along with it. And really, to even find people who uh, you know who also feel the same way, you know, it really makes a huge difference. That's why I'm grateful every day. There are days when I cry and grieve and whatever grumble, but mm-hmm. I always tell myself I should be very grateful. You know. No, I think that's that's so true. We couldn't have put it better. I'm just going to say that you guys have said everything I had in my head and, and made it like so much better. I hope that people who are watching can, you know, take a page from your book and, you know, sort of try to get there. Because like you said, it's it's a lot of sacrifices and it's very difficult along the way. Um, jumping into another section, uh, segment. So you said that, uh, you know, in lockdown, um, when we've been like so much indoors and everything, we focus more on like I said that skincare and everything. And you guys said yes. So my question there is: Do you guys have a specific ritual that you know you do every day? Like let's say Aditi or Elton, either of you or both of you, that there's one thing that you've learned I think over the past year, and you think this is what I'm going to do. My nighttime thing could be one thing, could be a couple of things. Anything interesting? A peek into your life. Um. So you know, uh, before lockdown, I used to always say natural, 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 and I did go by it. But whatever it is, if I walked into an event, I did have, you know, I would put some makeup on my face. Or yeah. if I did an interview, I would have some makeup on my face. And I would always say that before you put the makeup, you have to look after your skin. But I feel in the lockdown, because I actually yeah. just started with just not having access to it, because I went from shoot to my home in Hyderabad, uh, uh-huh. and all my stuff is in Bombay, yeah. so I didn't have access. So I did a cover, I did, I did so many things with literally one cheap and lip, lip, lip tint uh, my brow brow palette and possibly like just uh, you know a brush dryer or something like that and I, I really had access to very little and I realized that uh, a little goes a very long way if you actually really look after your skin look after mm-hmm. what you put in, in you know into your tummy and um, and if you just breathe I mean, I uh, before lockdown, and I and I, I know lockdown has been has been hard on everybody, but I've realized that it's so important to prioritize. It's so important to understand that you don't have to live your life being a hamster on a wheel, mm-hmm. and uh, it's so important to listen, to breathe, to look around you, because it's those things that really make you who you are. You know, uh, you yeah. grow by reading, listening. 
otherwise it's always like you are busy you're like yeah and so you only hear half the sentence and then you processed it and you've gone but to actually listen to another person to reset uh, the pace reset your pace and to i guess not no better word than i can use that, that i can use at this moment than blue and uh, and with that also then comes that understanding of um looking after your health uh, which is very in one for a lot of us because we really run around yeah. a lot and we have so many different weathers we're dealing with and uh, uh, stresses etc etc um so i actually did a lot of home stuff which i anyway always did but i didn't mm-hmm. love it uh, and i make concocted my own hair oils uh, so people were doing like recipes uh, online mitesh was for mm-hmm. mitesh rajani and adamika was he sent me some uh, hair recipes i tried my mm-hmm. own uh, face masks i was just every day i was doing something and the one thing that i think really helped me was just being creative through the lockdown you know it's not just about your skin and your hair and beauty it's also about being creative doing something having a purpose you know mm-hmm. other than just being famous making money and i'm not not uh, not uh, devaluing any of that i enjoy all of it but i'm just saying this so much mm-hmm. more as well you know to being a wholesome person Mm. no that's so true because i think holistically that really matters we can't just only talk about uh, you know beauty and then extract all the other factors because they all play around together right yeah yeah like how are you going to put on your face it's not going to work beyond the point you know so yeah but okay any routine maybe lt can because i don't have a routine honestly okay i do of since the last i'd say 6 months i do Uh, because uh, it's uh-huh. never showing me a lot of these things maybe i indulged once online i shopped and then i started getting a lot of skin care and i bought like, so many like indian brands you know um just trying out things and they're really working i feel quite supple and fresh and my pores feel somehow a little less uh, flared up uh, uh-huh. in the past few months so i feel like it's working and i'll tell you what i do It's the basic that CTM. I know that toner is now redundant, but I like to use it because it just feels fresh. Just you know, spritz yeah. in morning and night. And I do it both shower in the morning and at night. Um, so yeah, start with cleansing. Then I do that toner. Then I put a moisturizer, uh-huh. and I try to use one brand across uh-huh. all these different sort of layers. Just so I feel like maybe formulaically it sort of yeah, sits better. Yeah, that's true. It does. Yeah. So right now I'm using. Uh, rare earth and conscious mm-hmm. chemist and i'm going to switch between those two just trying to keep it's working uh then there's a serum some sort of a vitamin c thing or whatever it is uh, mm-hmm. and then sunscreen in the morning you know actually i think that yeah. has made my skin so amazing because i get yeah, these tiny sure. light freckles you know and uh, in lockdown i mean i, I would step out into the the garden maximum and then come back in but you know more than that and i feel like how oh, my freckles have gone and the other thing that i got was the uh, l'oreal girl so i got a package from l'oreal very kindly they had this large package mm. of like uh, the micro essence and the hyaluronic acid and stuff like that and um, i you know whatever i put on my face before that i always put these things because i feel like hydration is so important for the skin so when i do use product it starts with this the micro mm-hmm. hyaluronic acid and then i put on like a uh, basic moisturizer and all but i don't have beyond that i don't have a routine all and i heard is very good i just had a naughty thought all i heard is i received a large package <laughs> <laughs> no but thank you thank you for the thank you for sharing your um routine teens and aditi thank you for what thank you for your input no <laughs> that brings me i'm trying to toss it <laughs> no what all i have learned from elton is not just about you know like uh, uh, being a wholesome human and beauty and health i have also learned <laughs> all this rubbish <laughs> oh yeah you know it it just be like huh? <laughs> no humor is essential too i i completely oh, agree with him humor is always a bit much <laughs> right um Okay, and moving into our le- next question, I think do you have a sort of a DIY ritual or like a you know something yes. to make at home? Yes. That you can share oh with us. Oh my god! I showed this on another something I was doing recently. Uh, I have it in the fridge. 
you know these Starbucks mug, like a mini mug, those little, what do you call them? Tea, tea cup kind of sizes for a coffee shot. Really beautiful. Uh -huh. Coffee shot mug. Yeah. Coffee espresso mug. Yeah, so I make my own face mask and I put it in there. I make a lot at once. And then I put it in there and I keep taking it out from the fridge every time I want. Add a little oil, serum, and then put it on. And it's like a mix of everything that, you know, mommy has said is good, kind of. Like, uh, those haldi things, the sticks, mm -hmm. I found them. Uh, then I put, I'll put a serum also. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I apply that thing on my face sheet, oh. the stick face sheet, and I put that on. Oh my God, a glass of whatever. Yeah. So, this is like you, so this is like all things at home and it's like a quick DIY kind of thing. Yeah, I just indulge myself because what am I doing at home? Sometimes you feel like purposeless. So then you just, yeah. you know, I indulge myself. That's so interesting. I think uh, we're going to note this down and we're going to try it at home. Because looking at your skin, I'm... Yeah, yeah. Giving me a great idea because I sit and grind this and grind that and then I make something. But I usually work with whatever there is in the kitchen. So... Uh, like back home in Hyderabad, I would walk into the kitchen and figure out what was being cooked that day. And if uh -huh. I was able to put it on my face, like I can't put a brinjal on my face. But oh, I'll show you sometime. <laughs> but if like if there was tomato or potato or whatever it is lying around, then I would like, you know, put it through a grinder and then make a pack out of it. And then, you know, I can... Like I, I would mix a little of this, the back, the sort of the stuff that L'Oreal sent me, the hyaluronic acid or whatever. I would mix a little bit of that in it so it gets a nice texture. Because quite mm -hmm. often when you just put your homegrown textures, you know, the uh, homegrown uh, kitchen stuff onto your face, it doesn't always hold. Oh, it's so the, the consistency. Yeah, so the moment you put a little bit of like a uh, yeah, hyaluronic serum or something into it, it just holds nice. And then you also feel... Um, I don't know, your skin feels kind of plump and fresh and nice. So I, I think a lot of that. Yeah. Like aloe, like, so, you know, there, there was a day when I was feeling mm -hmm. like, uh, and I had to do a lot of uh, promotions because at that point, some a film of mine was releasing. So I took some mm -hmm. aloe, I put a lot of this hyaluronic acid into it and mm -hmm. I sort of made a nice uh, sort of mush out of it and I put a little bit of flour, like you can put rice flour or um, wheat flour, uh, a little bit of flour to give it a little hold and I put that onto my face and I kid you not, I was glowing like a light bulb. But she's not sharing her secret ingredient which is on her face 70% of the time off camera. Which is what we want to know. Kailash Jeevan. Kailash. <laughs> what is that? that? Kailash Jeevan? It's a oh 40, 47 rupee beautiful Ayurvedic cream that you can ingest. You can apply uh -huh. it on like open wounds. You can open, uh, put it on a pimple. You can put it on a mosquito bite. So I get bitten a lot. I get uh, like I get a lot of mosquito bites. And if there's one mosquito in the whole of Bandra, it will find me and bite me. Oh God. <laughs> and my skin is so sensitive that Rubbish. a tiny little bit is true. You know it's true. And, and my skin is so sensitive that a tiny little bite becomes like that huge. It's like a It becomes like a so the moment I have a mosquito, like I have keratin in every drawer. Like uh, you will find it everywhere in every bag. It's always there. So the moment I get a bite, I put it on them. They all make fun of me because I roam around Shin everywhere spots. with that. With right? spots of bite. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but you can I get rid of a mosquito bite, then, you know, have van vanity about putting some ointment on your face. Yeah. Ointment is Oint the word. Ointment. <laughs> But it's, I think that's such a special hack because, you know, these are things that are like so readily available to everyone. So yeah. I think thank you so everyone can so use it. It's so good. But then there are so many hacks. Right? You can use uh, yeah. camphor, uh, you can use coconut oil and camphor. It does the same thing on your mosquito bites. Mm. Oh, cool. I'm like, yeah, I'm like a homegrown. Camphor one. crushed? Yeah. Wow. That's very good. It'll burn? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. So that brings me to my next question. Um, Aditi, what is one hack, skin care hack that you have stolen from Elton? But I want Elton to answer this. So let's say if he guesses it, that there's one thing that skin Aditi has I don't think there's anything skin about skin care, no. care that he can teach you. Okay. She's more in that. She does more skin care. Okay, so but how about you? But Elton is one of the few people who does a lot of skin care for me. Before we uh -huh. put some makeup so that the makeup can be very thin. Yeah, it's like a veil. You know? Yeah. 
okay so, so then beauty beauty uh lt really there's so much that lt don't wow. no but i want elton to get it oh lt okay because it'll be fun now huh? then let's see if you guys LT like come to the best, but lt knows me too well <laughs> yeah i would say brows yeah that's right because it's just it just brings out her personality better uh-huh. and it's just uh, yeah more relevant and that's i think that's great because that's also the first thing you said aditi that you know when you didn't have those um, supplies on you all you were using is that tint and then you were doing your brows that's what you said yeah but i've done a cover uh, with just the brows and some tint mm. and literally nothing else wow skin that care. is skin care a heck of a lot of skin care skin care that's iconic i'm going to say it because texture comes from skin care right yes I, my brother shot that cover my uh, yeah yeah my brother that's lovely i think that's iconic because you know the world is kind of i mean i won't say the past year but still people are so obsessed with heavy faces and you know doing all these kind of things mm-hmm. that is something to look up to for me personally you know, i would honestly, say that. yeah but i'll tell you something very honestly like you know for everybody it's different so i you know i don't mm-hmm. want to uh, be superior and say well, i use makeup and because that is that is something that i'm comfortable with and it works for me but mm-hmm. i you know somebody else who loves makeup there are so many people who love their makeup who want to right. use their makeup and i feel that it it suits them because that is what they want to do so they make it work Yeah, no, I right. would say makeup is extension of yeah. wardrobe and personality, yeah. not the other way around. Yeah, like even today, um, I was wearing this T-shirt, and um, there was a conversation about, oh, LTs come looking so beautiful, and should I be like more dressed up? But then LT said, just leave her. That's we talk about beauty, so that this is how she is. So just leave her as she is, like that. Mm-hmm. You know. So mm-hmm. I feel like. I think that's again. I, I, you guys are just smashing it out of the park because you guys have just said it. Like you know, it's so subjective. I did not see that point of view. Now that I see it, it makes so much sense. Everyone has their own choices. Everyone likes to do certain yeah. things with them. So we can't really put it under an umbrella and say, you know, but you know what? Yes, sahi hai, ye gai, ye galat hai. Yeah. So everyone. And you know, somebody who even you know, sometimes you see somebody put the most basic makeup on, and you're like, oh, you know, like yeah. stuff that if you. if you saw in a magazine whatever you'd be like oh my god this is so dated but now that person walks in there with a beautiful smile that person is a lovely human being mm-hmm. and that person is owning that makeup you know mm-hmm. as soon as possibly i am never going to say that that person looks like rubbish you know i i will say that that person is so beautiful that's a fair point i completely agree with you no, there's no i i believe there's no right and and i think i've learned that from elton as well yeah but i'm i i mean there is some I mean, basic has, things yeah. right but what we think is uh, common sense may not be common so I'm, it, it would be like mm-hmm. to be event appropriate to be uh, culture sensitive uh, yeah. you know to know what time of day you're going out i don't care so much about what trend you're wearing of autumn winter 2021 or yeah, yeah. i don't care about mm-hmm. those things yeah. you know yeah but just to be a event culture all of this uh, timing Season. Right. So kind of, kind of, again. So like being a little worldly in that sense, not just being aware of one thing and then that's it. Yeah. Then you're kind of obsolete to everything else around you. Also, yeah. knowing what you like, like actually having a, a vibing with whatever whatever it is that you're doing. Like, uh huh. Make an informed decision about what it is that you like and what you want to do, and not according to what somebody tells you. Yeah. Which I guess takes a little. Maybe it takes a little effort and time. because we have i have like suppose in my profession i have access to so many people you know who uh-huh. will help me who will teach me who will tell me maybe everybody doesn't right no that's yeah that's, that's a good point i'm you know i'm kind of reflecting as you're saying things because i'm like okay hold on that makes sense that makes a lot of sense i hope yeah, that everyone people forget that however natural or whatever i may look and people talk about that so much whatever yeah. it is i have an army with me who's making right. sure that even my naturalness is super uh-huh. groomed right fair and uh, so i mean so it, it's a it's that's something like people who don't have that also have to remember yeah, when I mean, they even... feel like uncomfortable with how they wake up or how they look or how whatever at the most basic 
brushing one's teeth and taking a shower is uh, grooming. Uh-huh. Right. So it's just that little extra post that. Fair. Like right, for you're right. example, I've just cut my hair. Okay. I don't know yeah. how to do it because it's so new for me. I've always had very long hair. I don't know what to do with my hair. So when today when Elton came, I was like, Elton, Elton, what do I do? I don't know what to do with this hair. <laughs> I don't know how to do <laughs> it. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I'm just like struggling. So, yeah. So I think that's great that you have Elton there to like help you out with everything. So he's kind of got your hair. Your hair is looking lovely. On the days that I'm working, let me add and underline that thirty times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was just, I was just saying your hair is looking lovely, both of y'all. That's is looking perfect. So he's great. He's great. I and came just, dressed like I'm going out to party. Deal with it. It's I'm figuring it out. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm figuring it out. It's new. <laughs> That's lovely. All right. So bringing us to another question. What is the one beauty myth that you guys believed or know that's not true? Like you would have, like, let's say a few years ago, you thought, okay, this was true, but it turned out not to be, or you've always known it. Anything from the both of you. Okay. So like, I would say, you know, in the, when I was doing up, um, mm-hmm. I was like, my mother was very particular that I didn't do my eyebrows. And okay. I was dancing and like, you know, like if you say like late nineties and stuff like that, there was, you would see fancy people with like really arched, beautiful eyebrows. And my mother begged me. So when, when, when it got to a time where I was like ready to, um, you know, when I started tugging and saying, let me know my brows, let me, I was also da- uh, dancing. And because of that, I needed to train them uh, when I danced. <laughs> Mm, and my mother said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I did it. The so, arch, the crazy yeah, arch. Yeah. And uh, now I've gone completely the other way. And I'm much happier. I don't okay. know if that's answering your question. No, but that no, changes but that, the personality. It does, right? But that's so interesting. Thank you for sharing. Of course, that's whatever comes to your mind is the first answer I think we want. Because that's going to be that's going to be something that some means, means something to you. And it's going to be something that we would love to hear. So, Elton, what about you? You said beauty myth. Yeah. Any myth. Beauty For me, myth. That, you know, you have to be fair and un, unweathered to be beautiful. Right. In our country. I'm being very mm-hmm. relevant to our culture. Um, right. And people obsess over it. No, I think you're right. I think all of us are kind of grown up on that in some way or the other. Even if not in our personal households in the cultural society that always comes up, you know, that a person who's going to be fairer is going to be always prettier in a way. Yeah. yeah that's Unblemished, basically. Unblemished. Yeah. yeah. So, right. Yeah. Unblemished, flawless, deeper skin. Yes. Brain, you know, Buttery. I mean, yeah. And unblemished, flawless, lighter skin. Brain. And that comes from your prepping with your skincare. Yeah. So, back to skin. Right. So unblemished doesn't necessarily be, mean light. Yeah. That's, and but people when they talk about it that's what they feel so when you know so when a lot of people compliment um uh, compliment me or just generally i always wonder you know what is it are they just taken in by the lightness of the skin or what is it because in india you're, you're absolutely right it has so many he's he's so right it has so much to do with skin tone and i hope that that goes soon it's kind of like wait but it's I, you know there was a thing I read somewhere I don't know it word for word but something on the lines of um, it all boils down to basically being either bright and transparent or mm-hmm. dark and sort of mysterious or sinister exotic sinister not exotic okay. and so as long as you have tires that are black um, and you know, sort of uh, diabol- diabolical stuff that is black and mm-hmm. white, you know, like ballet. Pure. Ballet is white, it's airy, it's Pure. lifted, it's yeah. elevated. Yeah. Well, as right. you, know, you know, something like a kathak or something is all about the floor and the gravity. Right? Uh-huh. So, but like I, I'm saying as long as certain, certain black things are associated with this sort of diabolical sense, sinister, uh-huh. uh, and white is always associated with uh, being bright and pure and virginal so you'll always have that color divide so it will never right. let go you know and, and think like you know even, even as kids you know when like you go your hands get dirty 
uh, mm. they get mucky and they got mud on them so mm. they become like darker right mm. yeah and people say kaale haath kaale ho gaye as a bad thing or haath mm. gande right. ho gaye like it's a bad thing and oh But wow you become lighter mele ho gaye is the right it's mela yes. is just that it's got dirt on it soil soil that's the right syntax so right? mela is ganda ho gaya hai Yes. Yeah, but they say hot kale ho gaye, chhi ja ke do like that, you know. So it's like right. it starts from the, the time that you're very small. Yeah. And we always encourage people who are lighter. Oh, you become fairer. You become fair. It's not. Oh, you become fairer. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think uh, in terms of our but culture. But there is. A, and let me please also add. There is also a difference. Yeah. Like, Oh, well, and actually, I shouldn't say that just now because he's right. Uh, a ma- maximum po- like. the larger that is for the yes. country does believe that so i'm not going to bring in the other thing because that's more light hearted continue sorry right no that's about it i think um that sums up everything that we've talked about so well uh in terms of beauty uh skin care regimes or a beauty hack in terms of you know multitasking with products everything has come together so well in this talk and it's become so organic i think we haven't had to like steer it so i'm really grateful about that thank you guys for being so open and honest It was lovely speaking to you. Now I just have one last question before we go. What is one thing you love about each other? You start. Actually, I'll say first because you'll have to I'm think thinking. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> What I love about LT is um, there are many things I love about him. Um, I would say that he's very, very honest about who he is and what he thinks, and. Mm-hmm. uh he you you know what you see is what you get right and, um, he doesn't uh, uh, with i mean especially with me in in my in my world and my profession you know he could just say things to make me happy or just to keep me happy but he doesn't do that he tells me very honestly like if i'm doing a rat he'll tell me and mm-hmm. if there's something good then he'll tell me though he gives me compliments very rarely but he, when he does i know he means them and so they mean a lot and so i really love that about him i find him very real and very authentic and he is a he's a such an artist from beginning to end whether it's doing up his house or singing or dancing or uh-huh. uh, cooking or makeup or painting he does it all and he does it beautifully so i have a lot of respect for him as an artist and as a human being because he's so real and so honest and so loving behind all his ee faces and all he's very loving <laughs> And so he has my back like whatever it is he has my back that I know That's so special thank you Aditi Elton your turn I'll leave the room so he can No I was thinking because it's such a theme you have to see things isn't it for the moment what is nice because there's a lot of things that are nice I'm saying Yeah 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 like yeah. I'm sort of you know <laughs> um but I would say right now I'm thinking Yeah, she's consistent. It's not like when there's a movie, movie promotion, she's suddenly calling me, "Sweetie, darling, you know, dear." Yeah, <laughs> she's consistent whether she's working or not. Uh huh. Whatever, whatever phases of life. So. So she's like your go-to person. She's always there for you. Yeah. That's I such a love. Not much, yeah. but she's yeah. always there. Yeah. Thank you guys this has been a very humbling conversation i feel like i'm taking away so much personally and introspectively uh i hope you guys have had fun uh, yeah. speaking to me and Love i that. hope that, i hope that you guys will be best friends forever i'll just say that <laughs> make Thank us you. make us a nice chain the gold <laughs> we'll make it corny we will make you those bracelets and we'll put like little hearts on them have one for aditi one for elton <laughs> Like in, in boarding school, we used to have like uh, blood, like blood, blood, or blood sisters. We used to do all this shit, you know. Uh, oh so God! Okay. No, I just meant I just meant that as a joke. But I do, I do. I'm really humbled by your bond, and I hope that all of us can find that in someone or the other, you know, along the way. So yeah. thank you so much for talking to me about beauty, about everything in between, and joining us at the L Beauty Weekend uh, presented by Tata Clique. It was lovely speaking to you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. 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 Have a lovely day. Thank you.